How you doing, Denali? Need more water? Yeah, it's a little hot out here, isn't it? Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here. It is terribly hot out here today. In fact, that heat is what's kind of reminded me I haven't done my warm weather ultralight backpacking gear list video yet that I mentioned a few videos ago that I would. And I believe I said something in that video to the effect of, uh, I haven't done a warm weather ultralight backpacking gear list video in quite a while. This system I'm carrying with me right now is pretty much my most minimal, I would say for me, system. I'll do a tabletop review or kind of a sit down to go with this video, show you everything in the pack. Yeah, don't think I could have said that better myself. Now, unfortunately, Oh God, it's hot. Unfortunately, we're only halfway done our walk right now, so we got several miles to go. But my plan is that once we get back to my house and maybe I get a little cleaned up, we'll do a little tabletop classic what's in my pack gear video. Like my other gear list videos that I've made before, this can either be a standalone video or it can be watched as a companion to my Seneca Creek video that I did, the one that you just saw some clips from. What you're about to see now, everything in this pack is exactly what I brought on that trip and I used and it worked just fine. Now, as I mentioned, this was a warm weather trip. So West Virginia in the summer, the lowest temps I saw was like getting into the 50s and early morning, but that's about it. So what you're gonna see is what I brought for that trip, which means there isn't a lot of heavier clothing items. But I understand a lot of us wanna know a three season setup, or maybe we're going up north like the White Mountains where things are a lot more variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the list that I used on that trip. And then at the end, I'm gonna show just a few items that if I was going into one of those conditions, I I would add to the system to supplement. And as usual, I'll be posting these gear lists on my website in PDF and Excel format. So if you wanna download them, feel free to do that. That's syntax77.com in the gear list section. All right, well, the dog and I are gonna keep humping along here and we'll meet you back at the table and we'll break this down item by item. And here we are on the table. You can see my backpack is just barely in frame there, but it is here, the ULA Ohm 2.0. Now I have a separate video on this so i won't go crazy into the details of this pack and why i chose it because you can check it out in that video if you're interested but this is my ula own pack as a matter of fact as we go through the items in here and the way we'll do it is i'm just going to rip through the pack kind of as i go now my gear list is organized by category so for instance you can see the backpacks is 2.17 pounds 1.87 for the shelter 1.8 for the sleep system so on and so forth with the smaller categories there so if you go to the website you can get a detailed list that has all the descriptions and weights on it and then and also in the video description, I won't go as far into detail because of the limitations, but I will put a truncated list without the weights and descriptions, but I'll try to put Amazon links for at least the most notable items. If you enjoy the videos on this channel, using those links is a great way to support the channel. All right, so let's get right into it. First of all, let's flip this thing around here. Now I haven't even mentioned yet, this is a slightly under 10 pound system. I just happened to fall under that mythical or magical 10 pound number that seems to be a hard and fast rule for a lot of people. I'm not super worried about that. I used to really be like video game style with my ultra lightness, if you will, and really worry about numbers. Nowadays, I'm more concerned with just being weight conscious. Just at least if I bring something, I know that I brought it for a reason. And I know that ounces make pounds and pounds make pain. It all does add up. But of course, there are trade-offs for comfort and convenience, etc. Matter of fact, those of you familiar with my previous video a couple years ago may have noticed the weight has not actually changed. And that's true. The total weight hasn't changed, but the items have. Some items I got smarter with to save weight, and then I spent that weight to get certain items that give me more convenience, more comfort, etc. And one of those things was this pack, which does weigh about 50% more than my other pack, but it's way more comfortable, so it makes the whole load feel lighter. But enough about philosophy for now, at least. Let's get into these items. So on the side pouches here, these big old side pouches, you see disposable water bottles, half liter guys on each side here. Now, some of you may not like disposable water bottles. Uh, I've seen people say reasons that you should not reuse disposable water bottles. Hey, if you have a link to some actual medical studies that have proof to that, I'd be more than willing to see them. Link them in the comments below. Come on over here to the blackboard. Maybe if I draw a diagram of the process of conditioning, it will help you. Unhealthy conditioning? I don't want to be a scaredy cat all my life. Personally, I haven't found any data that tells me that I can't reuse these water bottles, so that's what I do. They're about an ounce a piece, and that gives me three liters of water capacity. I also have a little bit of duct tape wrapped around there. It doesn't really add much weight, but it just keeps 
a little bit of repair capabilities on me at all times. Also, one other quick note, guys, just to keep this video moving along, for each item, I might not verbally tell you the weight, but for every single item, there will be in the corner a weight that pops up. I'll put it in ounces, which is how I usually talk. Sorry, that's just how I roll for you in the metric system over there. Don't worry. I'll be putting the metric equivalent of every single item up on the screen as well. So if you miss anything, just rewind a couple seconds and you should see that title pop up on the screen for every item. What else we got in here? A sit pad. This is my Dutchware sit pad. Folds out just like so and folds back up. I use this for sitting around camp. It's nice and comfortable. It weighs just over a half ounce. It's crazy light. This is also an important part of my sleep system. We'll see later my hammock setup. And I use this under my feet to keep them warm in cooler temps because I have a shorter under quilt that is three quarters length and doesn't cover my feet. I believe that takes care of both side pockets. Now let's get into the hip pockets. All right, here's this one and we'll open it up on this ohm. I've talked about it before. I love the giant size of these hip pockets. So what do we have in here? All right, first up, ah, quite important, right? I just was moving too quick. My face went right into a rock. And this is double bagged. Looks a lot heavier than it is. It's just because of the bulkiness, but it is lightweight as can be. It's about an ounce and a half, and this is my first aid kit, and I keep this nearby on me. In this case, it's in this hip pouch. Now, I should point out, if you watch the videos, you noticed me wearing a gray front pack. That's where I actually keep this, but that gray front pack I'm only carrying because I film so extensively and I have a ton of camera gear. So I'm leaving that out of the equation and I'm packing everything as if I wasn't filming so much on the trail. So in that case, if I didn't have my camera bag right on my chest, I would probably keep my first aid right in the front pouch there to keep it accessible. And let's go through the stuff in here. Now, one thing you will notice in there, this isn't necessarily first aid in the classical sense, but this I consider an emergency item. It's a spare backup spoon. We'll get to my real spoon in a little bit, but if you've ever lost a spoon on the trail, you'll know that feeling and not want to repeat it most likely. So this is a backup, so you can always have something to eat with besides your hands. And then inside, I'm going to spin through this just really quick. I've got various bandages of various sizes in here, along with some alcohol prep wipes just to keep things clean. If I wanted to clean things up, I got some moleskin there with the little pop outs. So I can put that on an area if I feel a blister, more band-aids. This one is similar to moleskin, but it's called second skin and it adheres good for like on your heel and stuff. This here is actually some Cuban tape that I could use to repair my tarp, which we'll see in a little bit. Benadryl, as well as some ibuprofen, some other gauze, a little bit of super glue, which can be used to repair items as well as stop bleeding. My friend Mike just actually did that the other day. And a small tea candle seems kind of odd, right? But it's a nice source of light. It could be a fire starter. I just keep that around. It weighs almost nothing. And again, all of this is like one and a half ounces. I have a little straw tube that I seal with a lighter. It has some neosporin in it, two of them actually. And what's this? Spare water bottle cap. Yes, if you lose your water bottle cap, just like losing a spoon, that's no fun. So I carry one of these in my first aid kit. You also notice I carry some spares in my cook kit later. All right, so that covers first aid. First aid is definitely a personal thing. You can bring a lot more than this, and that really depends on the specific place that you're going, as well as your personal comfort level, how far away from aid you are, all kinds of factors. So I really can't tell you the best first aid setup for you. Matter of fact, all the stuff in this video is not the best way to do it by far. It's just how I do it. Watch a couple videos videos like this and maybe you can start to develop your own kind of idea for what to do on the trail or maybe you're already more advanced than I am which many of you probably are and feel free to chime in in those comment sections below about anything that you might do differently I'd be interested in that all right after first aid comes what's in this bag here looks like two items double bag to keep it dry ah the all-important toilet paper yes indeed don't want to forget that. So I have that on the list as a reminder. It's going to vary on the length of trip, of course, but always make sure to have toilet paper on your list, right? And this here, another toiletry item, just some baby wipes. You can uh, bring as many of these as you want. I usually find that one is way bigger than I need. I typically cut them in half and then bring one to two per day, depending on the time of year, how hot it's going to be, stuff like that. There's a good for cleaning up at the end of the night or whenever your heart desires. And that wipes out that side. So let's flip over to the other. Unzip this guy. And what do we have in here? First up is a good old classic compass. This is a Brunton brand compass, but just something so that I can have a sense of direction and match up with my maps. That's always important, right? And next, always like to keep this right at hand. This is my headlamp. Now, I have to be honest with you right now. I wanted to do the right thing, the honest thing. But what was it? And I'm trying to keep this gear video completely matching that Seneca Creek trip video as much as possible. But here's the deal here. I forgot this on my trip, but luckily I realized that when I was down there and I always carry this in my back pocket 
every single day. It's a Prion flashlight. It actually weighs the same as the headlamp. And so I was able to have this with me in the woods and I just tucked it in my hat, kind of makeshift headlamp style. However, if I was only going to carry one, I would go with the headlamp because it's just more versatile, easy to have on your head, but then you can still use it like a flashlight, right? And this is a Phoenix HL21. I don't think they make this particular model anymore, but I do really like it. My wife has a newer version of it. It's nice as well. However, it's probably a good lesson that we're bringing up here. How I forgot this headlamp. What if I didn't have that backup flashlight? So just something to keep in mind. A lot of these super ultralight lists are big on not having redundancy, but with light, I don't know. You should probably just think about that. It's worth thinking about to maybe bring a flashlight as well. Or a lot of you carry cell phones in airplane mode, then that could work as a flashlight too. But to be without light in the woods is a bummer. So on this particular gear list, you'll see this headlamp, but think about redundancy. Uh, next up, small bottle here. And that is a little bottle of DEET. So I take 100% DEET that comes in the larger bottle, uh, like a one ounce bottle. And I put it in this little three milliliter bottle that I got from Dutch Rare Gear. You can just buy these eyedropper bottles. So that way it's only like a quarter ounce. That stuff's really strong. I just put a little bit on the wrist, wipe it on me wherever needed. And it keeps the bugs away at least... Hopefully it does. Next up is a similar bottle, but I believe this is a 10 mil bottle. And as I can tell by my symbol on the bottom there, it is my sunscreen lotion. And again, I just squirt some sunscreen lotion out of a larger container into this, and it's enough for a trip. Depending on your length of trip, you could either use a larger bottle or multiple bottles, or just bring a travel size tube with you if you're gonna be out there a little longer. But for me, this is only a half ounce, and it's plenty for a particular trip, especially because I'm not showering too much, so uh, suntan lotion is not washing off as much. Although it is sweating off. All right, this conversation's getting a little gross, but that's my sunscreen. And you know what? As I'm going through these hip pockets, there is one item missing because it is actually in my camera bag, which I don't have here, but that is my multi-tool, which most importantly contains my knife blade. Now I did already talk about it in this video here. Oh, okay, this little multi-tool credit card. When I go out by myself, I often don't get super creative with fires and stuff. Sometimes I don't even have them. I don't get real bushcrafty. And if I ever did lean that way, it would be with friends most likely. I'd say we are good. A little buck knife flip. Get ours in the middle there. God, look at that. That's amazing. So this little tool, actually has everything I need. Now, often I do carry just my little trusty pocket knife here. I love this thing and for small tasks, gets the job done. Again, you're not gonna like build a raft out of it, but it works, right? But it's also two ounces just for the knife. This little guy is 1.3 ounces and inside I'll run through it just real quick. Actually has a little knife in there with a little groove on it. Gets the job done. It's almost as big of a blade as that knife I just showed you. It's got a can opener slash bottle opener, some screwdriver heads, tweezers, toothpick. It's got a little compass on it that, yeah, probably not the most quality compass in the world, but guess what? Once you pull all the metal stuff out of it and I hold it in my hand, it's pointing right at north. I know north is over there because that's where I aim my antenna to get all my lovely Philly over the air programming and a magnifying glass. So for an ounce or so, not too bad. Next up, all right, two items regarding fire. I have a small lighter. This is a refillable butane lighter that my dad gave me. It's from the 70s and Eddie Bauer. I always have that. Now this is in addition to the one that you'll see later in my cook kit. I like redundancy with fire just like I do with light, maybe even more so. And the other item is a little mini fire steel from light my fire this thing is like a third of an ounce and it makes a nice spark so that you can mainly light a stove or get a fire going next up uh speaking of that fire lighter this is hand sanitizer which is good for you know keeping yourself cleanly and hygienic on the trail but also this can make a little fire starter you squeeze some of this on some twigs and then you hit it with that fire steel and it's going to light up pretty nice so i do like having a little bit of hand sanitizer dual purpose and that covers everything in that hip pocket so let's move to the back mesh pouch right here which is nice and big eats a lot of gear i love it on this ula ohm 2.0 pack i prefer to put stuff in here that i want access to quickly on the trail as well as right away when i get to camp so that's kind of the strategy i keep in mind with this pouch first thing in it and it's actually connected by a small carabiner here is my pack cover and this is by Dutchware gear I've shown it in plenty of other videos this mesh pouch is separate I got it from like a cup or something but I use it to keep it in there because it's virtually weightless this fits perfectly over my own backpack it's nice and stretchy it fits over some of my larger packs as well so I can use it on a variety of my packs this thing is under two ounces water resistant and resilient I've taken some falls with this and it keeps on ticking now I know that some of you who are more seasoned will tell me, and you definitely do, to do away with the pack cover and just put a trash compactor bag in 
side of here your stuff's going to get wet anyway they say with the pack cover and then that way you won't have to mess with it and the trash compactor bag weighs less why do the other kids do everything differently they choose different things they stick together on everything here's my thing do whatever you want whatever works for you after about six years of just using the pack covers, I've never had my gear get wet inside. I don't know if I'm pure lucky or whatnot, but I've been in some real downpours and using the pack cover properly placed on my pack, it has been fine. So I haven't experienced any failures using a pack cover. And then on top of that, it covers all of my stuff. Trash compactor is only going to cover your main compartment. Now, the weight savings, they say, well, I don't know. Trash compactor bag has to weigh something, but it's probably close to weightless. This weighs 1.75 ounces. But here's my question that I never seem to see anybody bring up. When it rains and all this material gets wet, it soaks up water. Your pack starts to weigh more. I'm going to guess you're soaking up more than 1.75 ounces worth of water. Water that would just roll off if you were using this sill-coated pack cover. So just some food for thought. That's why I stick with the pack cover. And here's another reason, and it has to do with dual purpose. This pack cover, I often put my food in here at the end of the night, and I cinch it up, and I use this as my bear bag. It's water-resistant, and it goes up in the tree just fine and then I don't have to carry a bear bag. Next item in here. All right, I got a whole video on my hammock, so I won't go into it. Matter of fact, I have a whole video on a lot of the items in here. So when I get to those items, I'll just say separate video and you can know to go to my channel and just search for it. And one of those is the Dutchware Chameleon Hammock and specifically the suspension system that comes with it, which is called the Beetle Buckles. And that is what's right here. So these are Dyneema straps. They are super light compared to their strength. Now, since doing that trip, there is one upgrade that I did to these and that is to replace the standard carabiner with a pair of titanium dutch clips that i already had laying around that cut the bulk down a little bit and saved me about an ounce for the pair now i'm fully aware for a hammock system those of you familiar you can go way lighter you could get some whoopee hooks like so which is a lot less volume a lot less weight i've used these in the past but i'd be dishonest to put these in this video because after several years and trips i've learned that i value convenience in this case a little more that makes my trip end up being happier and overall that's what it's all about so just know you could cut your weight in half on the suspension system by using whoopee hooks but in my case i really like these beetle buckles because they're quick to set up they're still very lightweight considering the work that they're doing and i just like them so that's what i'm using for my suspension of course that was one of them so the second one should be right here but we'll get that out of the way next up ah my spoon this is a c to summit aircraft aluminum spork the long handle edition, I like that because for dehydrated meal bags, you can really kind of get down in there with this long version. I have not seen the spork in long version in several years. Maybe it's come back. I haven't checked real recently, but usually I just see the spoon version of this. I do like the spork version. And this is all I really carry in terms of utensils. I don't usually carry a fork or knife unless it's a real laid back fun trip, like in the winter with Mike and I making steaks and whatnot, then I'll bring that extra stuff. But for the most part, this does everything I need it to. Weighs very little and gives me nice reach for my meals. Next up, bear bag line. All right, there it is. This is just 25 feet of zingit around a real lightweight carabiner. It's not like a climbing grade carabiner. It's just holding the weight of my food when I get to camp. The zingit is pretty lightweight stuff. It's low bulk compared to like paracord and it has a coating on it that makes it a little slippery so it's a little less prone to tangles. I do like that. And then I just have this little mitten hook on there that I can use to attach it to itself, cinch it around that camo pack cover that you saw to hoist my food up in the air. This is my water filter, the Catadine Be Free. Separate video on this, two of them actually, one on my upgrade that I did, which I'm not using here, and one on the system itself. Now, in one of those other videos, I showed how to hook up a larger bag to this, but going on a solo trip like I did on that Seneca Creek, trip this was just fine it filters really fast it's a 0.6 liter bag and i found myself not really wanting any bigger of a system or even a gravity system setup like i used to carry with the sawyer squeeze this does the trick for me and it is two ounces a hair under i do believe and again it's in that other video but it comes apart like that so you have the separate bag right there and then the filter element is in there and it pops together and you just squeeze your water right out of it 
super simple. I've grown to really love this thing. All right, I think this is the last item in here and that is the Hammock Gear Kuban Hex Tarp. Oh, how do I love this? Now, I'm not gonna take it out of the package. I'll just throw some B-roll in, but this is my tarp that I've been using for years now. The tarp itself is like five point something ounces. I throw the lines and everything on there and the whole thing is eight and a half ounces or so. It's crazy light, but it's still 12 by eight and a half foot long. Standard length is 11 foot, but I like that extra foot to give me some room underneath as I've talked about in several of my trip videos. I just like having a little more real estate underneath if I get caught under there in a storm to do chores, cook, hang out, not lose my mind in a rainstorm, etc. I really love this thing. It's not cheap. Kuban is not cheap. This is something that took me a couple years to work my way up to deciding to buy, but once I did, it's great. Now, people will undoubtedly say on these videos, oh, that ultralight gear, it's such a waste because it's not as resilient. Yes, this stuff is not military grade stuff. You wouldn't want to take this to war. These men are ready for it and pick volunteers. Parachute specialists. Soldiers trained to fight around the world. It's not going to get run over by a truck and stand up anywhere near as well as like canvas. But I'll tell you, I've been using this responsibly for, I want to say over three years now. And I don't have any tears. I don't have any holes. I don't have any issues. Thing works great. And I've really been happy with it. So I'm digging this. That's a hammock gear Kuban Hex tarp. And speaking of that tarp, we got ourselves our tent spikes. Now these are titanium shepherd's hook style tent spikes. They are only 0.2 ounces a piece compared to some aluminum ones, which can be three to five times as much. So for six of these, which covers all of my tie out points on my tarp, it's only costing me 1.2 ounces. Not bad. Now, some of the real hardcore ultralighters will tell you don't bother with tent spikes. When you show up, there's going to be plenty of twigs around. Just use twigs as tent spikes. I say go for it. But for me personally, this is one of those things that I've learned over the years. Convenience outweighs the 1.2 ounces in this case, for me at least. And I'll tell you, if there's a piece of gear where a lot of times time is critical. It is tarps and tent spikes. It starts raining, especially with the hammock system. One of the beauties of it is I can roll up and put that tarp up first and then get my life together and set up everything else, hammock included, afterwards. What I don't want to do when a downpour starts randomly is look around like Pocahontas for sticks that I can whittle into tent spikes just because I want to save 1.2 ounces. So I have learned over the years for me personally, I just carry all the tent spikes I need. I pay a little bit more for titanium, but when I get to my campsite, I am ready to go and these go right in the ground. And that covers the interior of that outside pouch. So now we're gonna move into the main compartment. All right, the cook set. This is my most minimal cook set setup. I have several. Sometimes I use canister stoves, particularly when I'm out with a group. Sometimes I use alcohol stoves. And for solo trips, my preferred method recently has been Esbit cubes, which we're gonna see in this system here. Outside here, I have a homemade insulator that goes around my pot. It's custom made for that, separate video on that, all about making that. So let's take that off. And that's just Reflectix on there that has been taped into the shape of the pot. I can keep my noodles and stuff hot for rehydrating. It keeps my hands from getting burnt on hot liquids. I just, I like it and it's very lightweight. Then we have my little stuff sack that came with my Tokes 750 mil pot, which we'll see in here. First item is the windscreen that I use with the Esbit system as seen in the Seneca Creek video. And that just flips out like this. This weighs about an ounce and a quarter and I can figure that around my pot. It works as a pot stand and a windscreen at the same time. Take it out of the bag. I like the bag too, because not only does it keep everything from coming apart in my pack, but when I'm at camp and I take this off and I'm using the pot, I can throw my other items in there so they don't get lost that you're about to see inside the kit and cinch it up while I'm at camp. So it's got a lid on there, which speeds up the boiling time, right? And then inside I have my little pellet tin. This used to have air rifle pellets in it and I use it as a stove now. So I'll open it up as seen in that video as well. And it contains the Esbit cube. There's gonna be some residue in here, you'll see. So there's an old Esbit cube there. And what I do is I sit the lid on top of itself to give it a little height. I put it under that windscreen as a pot stand. I light it up, it cooks just fine. At the end, I'm able to quickly blow it out. And then Esbit's not the best smelling stuff in the world. So this way, after it cools off, which is important, I seal it back up in the tin, the smell is locked in there, and my remaining cube is ready for the next meal. And Esbit, for those of you unfamiliar, it comes in little packages like this. You just pop it out and this is a one ounce cube right here. And I found at a baseline of 70 degrees, a one ounce cube will bring to boil two cups of water or so, which is roughly the same results that I get out of one ounce of alcohol. So all I do is I sit down, I calculate all the meals that I plan to cook. I figure out how many cups of hot water that's gonna require, divide it by two and bring that many cubes, plus maybe one or two extra just for safety's sake, depending on the length of trip. Now 
Next up in here, this is a small plastic bag with some other items in it. This is something else that looks probably heavier than it is. It's a little bulky, but it's just a lot of items and it's backup items for cooking and fire. This is that same Reflectix material, but I made it into a little shape that I can use as almost like a pot holder so I can lift up a pot or other hot item without getting burnt. Then I have some matches in there, some pieces of tin foil, which I use for random cooking when I don't often expect it. I found that nice and some rubber bands. Here's my spare lighter that I keep in here. So I have two lighters on me, matches, and then that fire steel. I don't want to be without the ability to make stuff hot, as you can see. There's a striker I cut off of a box in there for the matches. And then once again, another spare water bottle cap. Next up, just some squares of paper towels that I've torn up into convenient sizes, as well as some Sea to Summit pocket soap, they call it. Basically just took what looks like bar soap and sliced it razor thin. And hey, if you want to be a more hardcore ultralighter, be my guest, don't bring soap. But I've actually found myself using this for times where we actually cook in my pot and it gets a little grimy. A couple of these in there with some hot water does the trick. Uh, my friend Mike had a shirt that was really nasty one time. He put it in a Ziploc with some water and a couple of these slivers, as you can see here. They're paper thin. He just put a couple of those in there, shook them up, and he almost had his own little laundromat. So I do carry this. With the paper towels, this is like half an ounce, so it's worth it to me. I find myself using that. And then the main item, of course, in the cook set is the pot itself. And this is a Tokes 750 milliliter pot. And I use this both for cooking and making drinking beverages, coffee, etc. Flip out handles, nice and light, does the trick for me. You can see it's a little scarred up from that Esbit. Esbit, a lot of the detractors say it produces too much soot. Um, this is after a lot of use. I don't find it to be that bad, but mm, what else we got in here? This is just some spare plastic bags. I usually like to have one of these in my pocket, maybe even two actually, so that if it starts raining, I can throw my cell phone or other devices in there to keep it wet, maybe a map or something, as well as just little snack wrappers and stuff throughout the day, rather than putting that trash in my actual pocket. And then the one gallon Ziploc bag, I find really handy for your larger trash items at the end of the night that you'll be packing out with you. I like some of these just for organization, waterproofing and trash. Oh, another bag. You must be getting sick of bags. There's nothing actually in this. This was from when I did my trip. A lot of times when I do a quick trip that isn't long, I just throw all my food in a regular grocery bag. I keep it at the top of my pack with all my food, keeps it nice and separate. And then at camp, I just tie this to a rope and put it right in the air like a bear bag. On a longer trip, if you're on like a through hike or something like four plus days, you probably wouldn't want to rely on this grocery bag. But again, I am carrying the pack cover as a more resilient bear bag. But this was just because I was lazy. Not everything has to be real gear. All right, we're getting into some clothing items and I wanna point something out. I have a separate video specifically on clothing, so I'm not gonna go deep on that. And I'm also not gonna talk about the clothing worn. And I have distinguished on my gear list, clothing worn versus clothing in the backpack. So for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna skip the details on the clothing that I wear because it's all in that separate video. You can check that out. For this video, I'm just gonna go over the items actually in the pack and the reasons I brought them. So this first one is just a spare t-shirt. So I will be wearing one of these and then ones in my pack. My philosophy with most of the clothes you're about to see in the pack is that these are clothes that I get to camp and I sleep in. Maybe after I've cooled down, dried out a little bit, then I have nice clothes to sleep in that's a little more comfortable that I haven't been hiking in all day. Now in an emergency, if something really happened to those hiking clothes, this is redundant. I can hike in all these as well, but I like to keep them dry and clean. They're like my sleepwear. It's just good psychologically and keeps your sleeping bag, top quilts, etc., a little cleaner because you're wearing cleaner clothes to bed. On a quick trip or on the last day of a trip, I'll just put this on the next day and why not wear fresh clothes on the hike out, right? So these are just synthetic t-shirts that I buy in like bulk packs. Synthetic underwear, I have a spare of that, keeping it fresh around here. And I should mention also, despite the length of trip, whether it's one days or four days, I'm not gonna be carrying a lot more clothes than what you see here. I'm fine with cleaning clothes on the trail, like in a stream or something and letting them dry and just rotating back and forth between the two every once in a while. But for the most part, my trips are usually not long enough to worry about that. This is a same kind of material synthetic shirt but it's long sleeve so I didn't wear this during the day on that Seneca Creek trip it was definitely too warm for that but at camp it was in the 50s there was a little chill in the air and I put this guy on all right oh, okay so this actually should have been on the outside mesh pouch because this is something that I would want quick access to uh, so just pretend I pull it out of the mesh pouch but this is my rain jacket and it's a frog togs or dry ducks brand rain jacket these are like 20 bucks for a pair which means you get the jacket and pants for like 20 bucks the jacket is like 5.75 ounces now obviously this is good for rain protection but what some of you might be pointing out is why don't you just use a poncho because then it can cover more of you 
maybe even go over your pack as well. And in the case of this, this is a dry ducks poncho. It's actually two ounces less than the jacket. I see the value in both. So definitely look into that and weigh those options yourself. The main reason I like the jacket is because I usually don't use this so much for rain gear. I have, of course, but this is like a super lightweight windbreaker for me. It gives me some wind protection and some extra warmth at night. So for five ounces or so, this can go over top of my other layers and it gives a surprising boost in warmth when sitting around camp or if you're somewhere that's more volatile weather-wise you can throw this on and it's going to cut that wind down on you regardless of whether it is raining or not so i'd like to always have these even on warmer weather trips because those early mornings and late nights can be a little chilly you never know especially if you're staying by water which usually means that your campsite is going to be a little bit cooler so that is my rain jacket now it is practically a disposable rain jacket even though i've made this one last like two years now i think or three years maybe um, but they will tear if you snag it on a branch or something so it's not the same as something more resilient like this ems hard shell but this thing's going to be two and a half to three times the weight i reserve this just for winter trips where it's actually like life critical if you destroy your hard shell and on the warm weather trips where it's more of just a comfort issue i go with this little cheapy guy all right, what do we got? Okay, this is a hat. Now you might be saying warm weather. You brought this on a warm weather trip? Yeah, I did. The main reason I've gotten in the habit of bringing a hat like this, and it's only one ounce, it's a micro fleece hat ski style, is because as you'll see, I sleep in a hammock with a top quilt. It doesn't have that traditional hood around your head. So I find a little chill in the air. This isn't a super heavy, hot hat to wear. It just keeps a little extra warmth. A big part of the heat you lose is through your head. So if I put this on while I'm hanging out at camp, it just makes me a little more comfortable if it's in like say the 50s or so which that trip was and then I slept with this on would I have been fine on that particular trip in that temp range without this hat yes but for an ounce I like it if you're going to like Kentucky and it's going to be humid and 80 degrees and like 68 at night then yeah skip this hat save an ounce pair of shorts going back to my philosophy of having stuff for sleep that's also redundant and able to be used for hiking if needed I just put these on before bed and I sleep in these, they're comfortable, and that's all there is to it. To be perfectly honest, I think this isn't the exact same pair I brought on that trip. It might be one of the few items that's different, but you get the idea, it's about six ounces for basically some gym shorts, it's synthetic. At the time, I really thought I was telling the truth. And if you get your pants really messed up, then you can just hike in these shorts while your pants are drying on your pack. Wool socks. I like wool for overnight camping trips. Now on a day hike and stuff, I find myself wearing really thin athletic socks often and it's fine. But the cool thing about wool is, especially on that Seneca Creek trip, right before camp at like 8, 30 at night it was pretty late I had to cross the water there's really no practical way to get across it without just walking through it because I saw a campsite on the other side so my feet were completely soaked at the very end of the night nice thing about wool is it keeps you cool when you need to be cool it keeps you warm when you need to be warm now in this case I needed warmth because my feet were completely soaked and while it was only in the low 60s to mid 50s that's still not very comfortable on wet feet so this wool kept my feet nice and comfortable and then the next morning hiking moving a little more active they felt just fine as well so these are some darn tough wool socks about the light to medium grade little short guys so they only weigh a couple ounces for a pair and again this is my spare so I would preferably sleep in this not everybody sleeps in socks but in my case I do. It just keeps my temperature a little more balanced, I find. So I would try to keep these clean until the last day and then I'd hike out in some fresh ones. Or like I said, if you're on a longer trip, you just rotate between the two socks, wash them in a stream, etc. Diving in. What do we got? Aha. This is toiletry kit. So inside of here, pretty simple. Not a whole lot to show. I got half of a travel toothbrush. I'm not that big of a gram weenie. So at this at some point, I did have the other half of the toothbrush, but then I think I dropped it somewhere and... Um, I guess I saved a half an ounce. So it's just, you know, the, the one half of a travel toothbrush. This looks like chapstick, but it's actually the infamous deodorant. If you watched my winter ultralight backpacking video, a little chapstick, always nice. Mm, I bet it looks so much better on camera now. Oh, oh my God. Okay, I'm not making this up. Oh, I should have labeled that. Ugh. It's actually deodorant. Yeah, that's another story. Oh, God, my whole mouth is dry. All right, I might have dry mouth for the rest of this. Uh, yeah, that was unfortunate. And look, I still haven't labeled it, but I have learned my lesson. So that's just some deodorant in a chapstick tube. I melted the deodorant and then poured it in there and it solidified and it's a tiny 
deodorant tube. Now, again, the hardcore ultralighters are going to be snickering right now. Why would you even bring deodorant? Well, because sometimes I hike with my wife and um, trust me, it's just better to smell at least better than terrible. Now this last item, toothpaste. Okay. I always just bring the travel size ones. I have travel kits for non-backpacking as well. So what I try to do is dip into those and whatever one is kind of squeezed out the most, depending on the length of the trip, I'll grab that, you know, just to save an ounce or so. So that's my toiletry kit, pretty simple. And that is inside the bag because it's less critical than say first aid or something. So I'm not gonna really need that until I get to camp, most likely. All right, now here is a critical item for sure. This is my Dutchware Gear Chameleon Hammock. Separate video on this two separate videos on this actually, one of which is really in-depth and detailed. So if you wanna learn more about this and that suspension system you saw, check those videos out. They will tell you plenty about this hammock system, but that's what I've been using. It's a modular hammock system. So on warmer trips, I can use a bug net. On cooler trips, I can use nothing at all, just, just the body. And on cold trips, I can put a solid cover on there and lock in a little more warmth. For the case of this trip, I put on the bug net. This particular one is made with the Hexon 1.0 fabric, meaning about an ounce per square yard of fabric. So it's very light relative to the strength of the fabric. Now, those of you watching who are following along on the gear list I've made may be wondering why the chameleon is not listed as the hammock, but rather I have this hammock here, the Dutch wear halfwit hammock listed. Well, I will explain that. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I want this to show everything I used on that Seneca Creek trip. And that's why I still included the Dutchware Chameleon Hammock. But typically, if I go out on a solo trip by myself, I'm being very minimalist and I bring out the Dutchware Halfwit Hammock. Now, I still want to include both in this video because there are reasons for both. One thing to address is hammocks aren't for everyone, but let's just pretend for the sake of this conversation that everybody loves hammocks. If someone came up to me and asked me to recommend a hammock and I wasn't sure of their exact philosophy on backpacking or perhaps their background, whether they're a beginner or not, I would easily recommend the Dutchware Chameleon Hammock because it is just a good all-around system. I know that everybody's going to be comfortable using it and it has all of those modular components so it can be used in a variety of applications. But on a trip that's more minimal, typically my solo trips, I like to take it even further. And the Dutchware Halfwit Hammock does just that. It takes it one step further in terms of simplicity and weight. This thing is stupid light. The hammock body itself is only 10 ounces and it squishes down really small. It's about 50% less weight and volume than the Dutchware Chameleon. Now the fabric, it's the hex on 1.0 material, but it doesn't have that full length bug net on there. Instead, it has this kind of draping bug net that just covers down to say below the neck, right around chest level. Now, understandably, this may freak some of you out. You may be a bit skeptical about how this works, but I can tell you, I've had this in some pretty buggy situations and it does just fine. The bug net drapes across, it seals with your top quilt and everything's fine. I've woken up in the morning, no bug bites, no irritations from bugs at night. It's all good. But like I said, this isn't for everybody. It is a much more minimal approach. Personally, I love it. It's my absolute favorite. I use it with that same suspension system. So my total weight is just at one pound and a half ounce. And that is for the hammock and suspension together. I love it. So that is why I officially put the half weight on my gear list. But just keep in mind, if that's a little too minimal for you and you want something with a full bug net or just to have the capability to put the solid cover on there in winter, etc., I would highly recommend the Dutchware Chameleon. Between the two, I think those are two pretty solid options for most backpackers out there. Good stuff. Love the Dutchware gear. Moving on the home stretch here. I think it's just two more items in here. And that right there is actually as seen in the video, my underquilt. In a hammock, you want insulation under you and it can't be under your butt because you're gonna squish it and you need air lofted up in between the down or synthetic stuff. So for a hammock system, what you do is you suspend underneath of you what's called an underquilt. Now I used to have a heavier one that was 20 ounces and it covered the entire length of the hammock and it was a heavier grade material. This one is a different model and lighter grade material. It is made by hammock gear as well, but it's called the Phoenix. It's three quarters length and it doesn't cover the feet like I was mentioning earlier, but I just put a pad under my my feet and it's fine. And honestly, for most warm weather, I go without the pad under my feet. I just hang it off of my ridgeline, that folded up guy you saw. If I need it, I'll throw it down there. But for the most part, in the 50s on that trip in Seneca Creek that I did, for instance, I didn't even use anything under my feet. And this was just fine. Nice and light at 14 ounces. And then the top quilt is by Hammock Gear as well. And I've had this one several years and it is my camo 
40 degree yeah. top quilt. It's called the burrow. And that goes inside on top of me like a quilt. It's closer to having a quilt on top of you than a sleeping bag. It does have buttons to keep that sleeping bag shape, but a lot of times I have it unbuttoned in warmer weather and it's just laying on top of me to regulate my temperature. And again, it doesn't have the hood on top, but I'm fine with that because I wear a hat or in warm weather, just nothing at all. And that empties the pack. So what I'm going to do now, as promised in the video, is I'm going to show you a couple items. Remember, this was warm weather. At the very lowest, it was in the mid to high 50s, I would say. And that was fine for this trip. But I'm going to show you just a couple items. The only way a pound that I would add for like three season or maybe up north. This trip was in West Virginia, but let's say I was going to New Hampshire where even in August it could swing down to 32 degrees and have crazy winds and stuff. You never know. So I would bring this stuff for that. Pair of long underwear and a down jacket, a nice collapsible one. In this case, it's my Montbell UL Parka. I've had this thing for whew, since 2012, I think. Still going strong and well, let's just talk about it first. I love it. It weighs just under nine ounces, a hair under, I believe. And you unstuff it. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this guy a lot. Really do love this. I got the one with the hood and adds an ounce or two, but I like that because then combined with that dry ducks rain jacket you saw, which is basically just a really cheap hard shell, I can put the hood up on both of those. It's really warm for my head. And I'm telling you with a hard shell and this and some t-shirt and long sleeve t-shirt layers underneath, a lot of extra warmth all of a sudden for an extra nine ounces in your pack and it packs down pretty small. I love this thing. It is not cheap. It's another thing that took me a while to invest in, but actually not too long. I'd say within a year of hiking, I realized this is a really important thing to have. If you don't have the cash, a fleece, like a heavy fleece, can get the job done and just bringing some extra layers with you as well. It's going to take up a lot more bulk in your pack and then way more as well, but you can get the same effect. But that's what I would typically bring for anything less than the mild temps I had down there in West Virginia. And then this, I bring on a lot of trips that don't seem like winter trips. These are just some synthetic long underwear. And I also have some merino wool ones. It's up to you. They're around six ounces a piece, depending on the brand. Like these are some Patagonias that I paid way too much for when I forgot these on a Utah trip. But I do love these for sentimental nostalgia reasons. But anyway, on Amazon, these second skins are pretty inexpensive and I find effective. If it gets really cold, you just slap these on under your current clothes, right? Or a lot of times when I get to camp, if it's not quite as warm of a trip, I would put these on and then my shorts and that would be my sleepwear or worst case scenario, hiking wear. Although, you know, you gotta be careful. You wouldn't wanna hike in these unless you really want to because then you're gonna sweat them up pretty quickly, I would imagine. But you never know, something like the White Mountains, I've had situations where it's gotten really cold all of a sudden, especially sitting around at camp. And actually, you know what? One other item is potentially a pair of, like I mentioned before, the matching pants for that dry ducks top jacket. But I'll be honest, unless it really is gonna be some cooler weather, I find it kind of counterproductive sometimes to fully suit up in a rain suit. When you're wearing the pants and the jacket together, I'll find you often ironically get just as wet from sweat because now you're in this garbage bag suit hiking along as you would from getting rained on. And at least the rain isn't sweat. So it is a potential to bring these. I think this would be another four ounces. And you know, somewhere like the whites where you come up above tree line and all of a sudden it looks like a major storm is coming and you don't want to get wet because it's close to nighttime and you're never going to dry or at least it's going to take a while to. Have these in your pack, pull them out, pull them on over top of your hiking pants real quick and you'll be nice and dry, assuming that you are careful with your speed and exertion. So that's something to think about for an extra kind of inclement weather situation you're going into, but that's a tough one. More often than not, I don't bring these, but it is in my arsenal. I'm gonna show you two other potential items that somebody might bring, and these are electronics. This is my Spot Messenger. I would say it kind of goes in the first egg category. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> I've had this thing for a while. I pay a monthly fee for it and I take it on all my trips. Now, both of these items could be replicated with a cell phone depending where you're going. And that's really something you're gonna to have to decide yourself. If you're doing a trip that's not too far off the beaten path and you know you're gonna have cell service for at least some text messages, then you probably don't need this. But this here allows me to send out a message telling my wife that I'm either okay, I have one button for that, 
or another button saying this is where I want to camp for tonight. That Seneca Creek trip that I've been talking about this whole video has no cell service. I'd say starting like at least an hour before you even get there. It's like the number one place I should have brought this and I must admit that I forgot it and it was super stupid. But if you're going somewhere like this, you might find this worth it and it is going to run you a little under five ounces. In my case, I wish I had it. It would have been well worth the peace of mind of knowing my wife was getting my messages. And on top of that, of course, even beyond just communication to let your loved one know you're okay, what you never want to have to use, but it's on here is the SOS button and then local emergency services would come and aid you, hopefully. And then the other one, is another item that I carry because I'm recording data for the channel, which by the way, all my trips since I'd say 2012, I have the GPS data for on my website if you wanna check those out for any of my trip videos. And I use this to record them. Nowadays, people, and they tell me often, cell phone apps are getting better and better at replacing the dedicated GPS. But for me, because I'm recording so extensively and really using the heck out of it, I like having this Garmin Oregon 650 GPS unit. Keeps it dedicated, keeps my cell phone out of the loop and allows me to make really good track data. But that does weigh around six ounces or so and it's gonna cost you a couple extra dollars. So there's two potential items that you may or may not want to think about but could potentially replace with a cell phone and not carry the weight. So there you have it, people. That is my sub 10 pound ultralight backpack packing gear list for let's say nice weather compared to some of the places you could be hiking. Hopefully you found it useful. Again, there are a ton of ways to approach this. I am just one little seed out there in the YouTube and hiking universe. So check out those other videos, weigh your options. If you're already seasoned, like I said, please feel free to chime in in the comment section below. I'm always looking to learn more, change my system and evolve it as I continue with my hiking career. Links are in the video description for my full blog post, which may make for an easier read if you're looking at all of the gear. And there are links in the video description for all of the products as well. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there. It's almost over, buddy. It's all right. I'll pay you double rate for today.